In today's video, we are going to compare ChatGPT4 versus Google Bard. On the left of my screen, I have ChatGPT4 open and on the right, I have Google Bard open. We are going to test these two different models with different questions. Let us knowledge based questions, technical questions, interview questions, as well as some emotional questions. We will keep the scores and find out who wins. Now, one of the limitation of ChatGPT is ChatGPT is only trained till September 2021. So if I ask ChatGPT who won the latest Soccer World Cup, it doesn't know. However, the bird on the right side correctly says that Argentina won the latest Soccer World Cup. Google Bard wins this one. Now let's switch gear to programming. I'm going to ask ChatGPT to write me to code for a tic-tac-toe game in Python. And I'm going to ask the same thing to Bard as well. Then we're going to test the code. All right, so ChatGPT and Bard gave a code. If I scroll down, uh, ChatGPT kind of explains about the code and how to execute it. On the right, Bard just gave the code. And then if I scroll down, it doesn't really explain much. But most importantly, the code must work. So I'm going to copy the code from ChatGPT. So I'm going to click copy code. And then I pasted the code in Visual Studio Code. And then I'm going to run this code. It is going to ask me to input where I want to put this. So let's say I want to put it on the first row, first column. Here we go, it shows the X. Let's, uh, and then for the second player, I want to put it on the second row, second column. All right, so this code is working. So I'm going to uh, end this. Now I'm going to uh, copy the code from the Bard and try to run it. Okay, I wish Bard also gave me like a copy code button, but that's okay. That's, uh, I'm being a little nitpicky. I'm just going to copy this, paste it here, and then run this. Okay, so this Bard code does not work. It says player X enter your move one to nine. It does not show the graphical representation of the board. Uh, also the game ends incorrectly. ChatGPT wins this round. Okay, let's move on. Now I want to practice some Linux commands. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to act like a Linux terminal, and I'm going to say the same to Google Bard. I typed ls in both ChatGPT and Bard. I actually like Bard's answer here. Bard says, sure, here's the list of files in the current directory. And then it kind of gives some additional commands. To see the contents of a file, you can use cat command. Uh, to change the current directory, you can use cd command, and to see the current directory, you can see pwd. On the left, ChatGPT did what it was asked, but it did not give additional commands. So I typed in pwd, and then it says, hey, pwd is the current working directory. I like this part, since I cannot interact with your local system, I cannot provide your actual current directory. However, here's an example of what the output might look like. Uh, I did the same with Bard. The current working directory is home slash Bard. Okay, so these two are kind of uh, similar. Both are working fine with Linux commands. Both ChatGPT and Bard can hold context because I asked them both to act like Linux terminal and for the subsequent commands, I don't need to explain, right? I can just say the command and it understood the context of the command. Uh, okay, so now let's move on to SQL. So I'm going to ask both of them to behave like a SQL database and create three tables, product, price, customer. Note that I'm not giving what columns should exist in those tables. So let's see how these two behave. Both of them generated the SQL commands. Let's check it out. On the left, chat GPT, create table product. It automatically creates the columns that are most popular, product ID, product name, description, create table price, price ID, product ID, price in decimal, and then foreign key. I like this part, foreign key, product ID. So joining this price with the product table, which is good. And then create table customer, and it automatically takes customer ID, first name, last name, and email. This is good. So on the right, a Google Bard also created the SQLs. Create table products, product ID, product name, product description, product price. So I don't like this part because we have a separate table for price. If you have a separate table for price, you don't include that in another table because then you need to update multiple places. Uh, create table price, uh, price ID. Okay, this is good. Product ID, price decimal, 
primary key price id foreign key okay so this one also creates a foreign key create table customers customer id customer name uh, customer email customer phone chat gpt did a little better here because generally also you don't save customer name in one field uh, you say by first name or last name if you call a help desk they always ask your last name and then so that they can search by the last name or the, just the first name and uh, yeah and i don't like the included price in the product table so this one i give it to chat gpt next i'm going to ask both of them to write a docker file so write a docker file for a python flask project one thing i do have to say bard is faster for every question, ChatGPT kind of gives this uh, scroll down typing with the cursor blinking, but Bard just gives the answer in an instant. Okay, let's take a look at the Docker file itself from Python 3.8 Alpine, 3.9 Slim. They're kind of similar. I actually prefer 3.9 Slim. It is a little bit more lightweight. Uh, set the work directory, copy. I like kind of gives explanation for each step install any required packages, run pip install, okay. Uh, run pip install for the BARD. Okay, then it does the copy, expose 5000, environment, and then the command. Uh, this will also work, command Python. Okay, so the Docker file, both of these Docker file will work. Uh, then if I scroll down, this Docker file assumes you have requirement.txt file in your flask. Yeah, I really like that. And then it shows uh, what's in the requirements.txt file. Whereas on the right, in the Google Bard, it doesn't really give anything else. Uh, and I really like how ChatGPT gives Docker build. This is the command you will run uh, to uh, build the Docker with this Docker file and then Docker run. So if you follow these commands with the ChatGPT, it will actually build the Docker and run uh, the container. On the right, it just gives uh, the Docker file. So this one, I give this to ChatGPT because it's kind of providing explanation as well as the steps needed uh, to run and build the Docker. Okay, let's scroll down. Now let's ask uh, basic interview questions. So I'm going to ask what is AWS, uh, both of this. Let's take a look at the ChatGPT answer. AWS stands for Amazon Web Services, range of computing services and APIs. These services include computing power, da, da, da. And then some popular AWS services like Amazon EC2, S3, etc. AWS serves customers across various industries. Now on the BARD, AWS is Amazon Web Services. Some of the AWS services offered. AWS is a leading cloud computing platform used by millions. I do like that it kind of gives the URL. Let's ask if it can explain in a simpler term. Explain to me like I'm seven years old. So let's press enter. Let's look at the chat GPT answer. AWS is like a big toy box in the sky filled with lots of different toys that people can use to build things on the internet like websites, games, or apps. Instead of buying and taking care of their own toys, computers and servers, people can borrow the toys from AWS and only pay for the time they use them. Yeah, I like this a lot. Uh, AWS makes it easy for people to share these, their creations with others and helps them make their ideas come to life quickly. So it's kind of like having a magical toy box that helps people build awesome things on the internet. I really like this description. Now let's take a look at Google Bard. AWS is a big computer that lots of other computers use to store their information and run their programs. It's like a big library where you can store all your books and toys and then you can go back and read them or play with them whenever you want. Uh, AWS is really big and it can store a lot of information. Uh, so it's a great place for businesses. AWS is really fast. I don't think this description is suitable for a seven year old. Google Bard is using like the term computers, lot of information, lot of programs. A seven year old, won't know what is a program or what is lot of information. So yeah, I give this to ChatGPT. Let's test with another uh, sample coding question. Write a Python AWS Lambda to insert, delete, read from a DynamoDB table. So let's fire this off. All right, let's take a look at the ChatGPT. Import Boto3, import JSON. Uh, all right, it's creating a Boto3 connection to DynamoDB and then uh, replace your table name with your DynamoDB and then 
it has this small functions insert item delete item read item and it's getting the operation from the incoming event that is good it's also grabbing it grabbing the item from the event uh, and then it has error handling and then make sure to replace create a deployment package by zipping the lambda function pi with any other dependencies and then it gives the steps to deploy the lambda okay this is good charge it is good uh, let's take a look at the right uh, here is the python aws lambda function that can be used uh, okay similar code uh, but instead of creating uh, separate functions it put everything in the body it's also creating the boto3 dynamo db connection inside the lambda handler which is not best practice chat gpt did that part correctly bar did not put error handling though which i liked for chat gpt see else error invalid operation uh, so bar didn't really give any error handling return item return item item hmm you you should actually return like this return status code 200 and then the body uh, because if your lambda gets called by application load balancer that left one with chat gpt will work but the google's uh, return will not work i give this to chat gpt because chat gpt code is a little bit more real world it has error handling it has the json return and then it goes uh, extra steps and explains what you need to do to deploy and run this code okay now let's ask both of them can they suggest a eks workshop let's start with bard first bard gave up okay this is not good i am designed solely to process and generate text so i'm unable to assist you with that okay uh, this is a text um, on the left chat gpt is still going but it generated the right response yes the aws team has an excellent workshop for learning amazon uh, eks called eks workshop this workshop provides a series of hands-on labs and modules that cover various aspects of eks such as cluster creation deployment monitoring scaling then it gives the url and this is the correct url if i click this uh, eks workshop will open that is good uh, so this one chat gpt is clearly the winner all right the last question i want to ask chat gpt is a real life question my friend is an alcoholic and i want to help him write me an email to send to him where i don't want to hurt his feelings but still recommend what to do so i'm going to ask the same question to google bard let them fire off let's go through chat gpt response hi friend's name i hope you are doing well it's been a while since we last caught up and i wanted to take a moment to reach out and see how things have been for you i have always appreciated our friendship and i value the bond we share lately i have noticed that you have been drinking quite a bit i am not sure if you are going through a difficult time or if there is something else going on but i wanted to bring it up because i care about you and your well-being please know that my intention is not to judge or criticize you i simply want to offer my support and help in any way i can okay then it proceeds to say i understand that talking about alcohol consumption can be sensitive i don't want you to feel like i'm overstepping I actually like this a lot it's like you know sometimes when you're struggling you don't want your friends to come and just tell you what's wrong with you uh, so this is like saying like hey i don't want to overstep i don't want to instruct you what to do but i am i am there because i really care about you uh, please remember that you don't have to face this challenge alone i am here for you and there are many resources available to help you through this journey you are a strong person and i have faith in your ability to overcome any obstacle you encounter again i want to reiterate looking forward to catching up soon take care and please don't hesitate to reach out if you need someone to talk to this is a good email if i have to write an email to a alcoholic friend i will use this uh, now let's take a look at the google bard response i am writing to you because i am worried about you i have noticed that you have been drinking more and more lately and i'm concerned about your health and well-being i know that you are an adult and can make your own decisions but i wanted to reach out to you and let you know that i am here for you if you need anything i have done some research on alcoholism and i have attached some resources uh there is no attachment here okay that's that's not good um i understand that you may not be ready to talk about your drinking right now and that's okay but i hope that you will at least consider the resources i have sent you 
what resources? There is no resources attached to this email. And if you ever want to talk, I am here for you. I care about you a lot and I want to see you get the help you need. And then PS. Yeah, I think ChatGPT did a better job. Uh, it talks about the feelings a little bit more, uh, brings up the AA group, which is excellent. Whereas Bard, I thought the email was a little short and it mentions a couple times that look at the attached resources but it did not give any URL or any anything to attach. So this one, I give it to ChatGPT. ChatGPT is the winner for now. What do you guys think? Do you guys agree with me or do you think my assessment is wrong? Let me know in the comments. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video.